wanted to show you something. This is my precious diamond. Hello diamond. How are you doing diamond? Good. What are you doing? Cleaning the car. Yosef, the righteous one, Yosef Tzadik, he's got a very good holy desire to help his parents cleaning up and organizing things. What, Israel? Israel Nathan, he's a different diamond. Israel Nathan, he likes cooking with his um, Play-Doh. I don't know what you call this uh, salty kids Play-Doh. What's that, Israel? It's a bread? Yes. Oh, amazing bread. But Yosef is very special, I'll tell you why. Because Yosef, once in a while, suddenly a spark of goodwill an inner flame is waking up from within inside of his holy soul and what is he doing he's taking projects right Yosef yes. you're taking projects and he decides to clean the car and he will go from head to toe from A to Z and he will make sure every corner will be perfect. Even that Dumbo, you see him, this little Dumbo? He will make sure that Dumbo will be clean. And he won't stop cleaning until he will finish. This is a person you can count on him for Pesach. This is a person you can count on him for life. Right, Yosef? So tell us please, Yosef, I want to interview you now. Why are you doing that? When you are cleaning, why you are going all the way? Not everyone are like you. Why are you doing that? Am I embarrassing you, Yosef? No. A little bit? Say yes, a little bit, Father. You are embarrassing me. <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. So I'm going to let you be. Thank you for helping us. We appreciate it. You are amazing. And now I'll show you the rest of my headache. My wonderful headaches. This is our laundry room and things are nice here, things are good, we don't lack a thing. They are sitting and learning, they're sitting and learning Hora. They're sitting and learning Hora, Masechet Brachot. We don't want to interrupt the kids are learning Gemara now. But Israel, what were you doing over there? I saw you were cooking. Right? What were you cooking? What were you cooking? Bread. What? Bread. Bread? Come, come. You were cooking bread? You were baking bread like mommy? Yes. Yes? And we're gonna eat it? No. No? It's not edible? It's not for eating? No. So what are you doing with it in the end when you finish? I'm playing with it. Playing with it more? Yeah. Israel Nathan is always asking us, Father, when are we going back to Israel? Right, Israel? All of right. the time you're asking? Right. Right. All the kids are enjoying having fun here. Israel Nathan is enjoying as well, but what are you asking always? Going to Israel. To the Holy Land, right? You love Israel? You love the Holy yeah. Land? Baruch Hashem, go, keep on playing, you're doing great. 
So, Baruch Hashem, I'm very, very happy and grateful with uh, those uh, fantastic headaches that I have. And it's an amazing experience to raise children in this messed up world. A world of distractions, a world of pain, a world of confusions, a world of lie, a world of lusts and desires and big difficulties, a lot of sorrow. And also for us, it's a big, big, big challenge um, touring around the world. If now for over a year we're in the U.S. and teaching and waking up the hearts of our friends and students and helping um, people, guys all around and trying to do the best that we can. And meanwhile, the kids are going through a lot and we're dealing with them and helping them to, to keep the, the spark and keep the faith and doing the best we can on that. My wife, she's amazing and Baruch Hashem. Um, the kids are fantastic. We went last week to the dentist and we've been there for four and a half hours and, uh, and, and they were behaving for four and a half hours at the dentist. It's, uh, it's something that is uh, kind of unique. It's amazing with all the difficulties and with all the, the challenges that we're going through. Still, um, the truth is that uh, bring them to the camera, you're saying. I want to. They're learning Gemara. i shown you. Why, well, you want me to disturb them? Must admit that even though that we're going through many difficulties and challenges, the truth is that they are amazing, amazing kids and that they're doing the best that they can. That's my office, you see. Here is my, uh, my seat, my chair, some books, computer. Yes, holy angels. Hello. I've been uh, commanded by billions of followers that wants to know what's going on with you. We just finished to learn the first page of Mara in Yes, Nachman, you got the message, you understood? Uh, what? A little bit. A little bit? What, what basically it's talking about? About the time when you're supposed to... to Nachman, you don't know English or you don't know the sugiya? I know English. Okay, so what was he talking about? Achma, time of saying in the evening. Time. Yes. And, and also in the morning in Shacharit. Or Abraham, something else you want to add on this fantastic limud? I saw you learned from Rab Zamira Cohen. Was he well? Was he good? Yes. Yeah, he knows how to teach. Yes. He's qualified. You approve him? Yes. Very good. Shalom Ephraim. Hi, how are you? Shlomo Ephraim sits in the throne of honor. Yes, Shlomo, was the limud good, satisfying? You got the message? Yes. Baruch Hashem, happy to hear. And Israel Natan, you're still cooking, baking bread, not edible bread, right? You told me that you cannot eat it. Amazing. Okay, guys, billions of people are cheering, supporting your learning and blessing you from heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Keep up with your good job. So, like I told you, amazing, amazing things are happening in this uh, house of adventures. And like I told you, the praises must go to the source. My wife and I, we spoke in the last few days. Men, and actually my wife is very humble about this thing, but really, men cannot understand. I don't know how many years it will take me to fully appreciate and understand the greatness of my wife. All this uh, issue of pregnancy and labor and delivering, bringing children to the world. I don't know what to say. Hi, no one can understand. And men are so stupid, so, so, so ignorant. And like, I hope you agree with me. Like I'm so far, so stupid, so, so self-centered and so 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 blessed to have my wife with me and uh, and that she will give me a chance in every opportunity again and again to to 
to share her life with me and to be who she is um, with me. It's amazing. It's amazing. Women are so, so humble and so modest and so, so inner. Of course women will agree with me. I'm looking for the men to agree with me. Women agreeing with me. It's a joke. <laughs> no, we need the men to agree. We need the men to wake up. Our wives are part of our tikkun. Our wives are part of our tikkun. I think that we're part of the tikkun of our wives. We're fixing them. Poor wives. Poor wives. Poor, poor wives. It's a very painful topic. It's a very painful issue. Men are very, very self-centered. And, and really, 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 really. We all need to take ourselves seriously. To see how, how we can work on ourselves to wake up. Only, only to the truth. Those are not Torah uh, words. It's not words of, uh, of, I don't know, wisdom from high source. It's just, in reality, need to check ourselves if we're honest or not. I tried not to read Garden of Peace. I would recommend you not to read Garden of Peace, if I may. So, um, to connect ourselves to the roots of the truth and really to appreciate our wives, really. To see how much they're giving and how much they're willing to give. How much they, they're ready to sacrifice for us. And uh, just to really connect ourselves to that, to that bottom line of truth, of reality, will wake us up, all the men, to really to find much, much more in our precious wives, to understand how great they are and how much they're giving. What are you saying, Israel? Let's see. Come, Israel, come to the camera. What have you done? You completed Nothing. your bread. You finished. So what are, what are we seeing here? Open it. Let us see. Your sandwich, sandwich uh, box, right? You have a sandwich now in it? Wow! It's so amazing, Israel. What you put inside the bread? I see that we have here a mandarin, right? And a flower, or it's a moon? It's a moon sandwich and a flower. Flowers and moon sandwich. And what's that? Flowers and hearts. Oh, wow! Amazing. I think you are the most unique chef in the world. What do you say about that? What do you say? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Humble kids, what can I tell you? They don't know. And, uh, and I don't know either. And Bezat Hashem, we're throwing our minds on Hashem all together, cheering up to Hashem. Praise the Lord, guys. Praise the Creator. Praise Him for making us His children, giving us the merit to be His messengers on earth, to go and spread faith and Muna in the world. If I can ask you, please join as many groups as you can on Facebook and share those videos to those groups. If you would know how many lives we can save just by sharing the content on social media outlets, it's amazing. It's deep, deep, deep and very meaningful act. Just join groups and just share the videos as much as you can. Shalom Efraim. I'm asking you please stop being so humble and tell us one small thing. Word of Torah, tell us something. Please, we're begging, Shlomo. Souls are thirsty, people want to learn what you have to say. Please, say something. Tell us a story, something you remember. Please, share. You have an idea? I have a story, but I don't know.
Please, come, come closer to me. Come closer to me and I'll help you. Come, please, honey, please. Come, come, little angel, come. Tell me, what's the story that you remember now? Tell me. No, before we finish. Talk a little bit louder, a story. It was before Sukkot, and I don't know what to say. No, tell me, Beivrit, tell me in Hebrew, I'll help you. So before of Sukkot, in a certain land, the, the schach, the coverings, the, the leaves that they're putting on the top, on the ceiling of the Sukkah, they were putting hadas. How you say hadas in English? I don't know. Okay, so they were putting hadasim over there. And there were people that were not Jews. What they were doing? They were selling the hadasim for the Jews for the for the Sukkot holiday. So once. The governor, the, 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 the ruler of that town, the biggest merchant, the, the seller, he called all the sellers to his house and he told them that the Jews don't have no other source to buy schach, those hadasim from no other source. So instead of selling three Instead of selling every branch in three coins, they will sell it in 30. One second, Yosef! Yes, Shlomo. They're going to sell it ten times more expensive. Yes. And then he told everyone that they will gain so much if they'll do it. They agreed on that, the next day it was Sukkot, everyone went out, they were standing there, all the Jews came to buy, and everyone were selling, trying to sell at 30, but the Jews didn't have enough money to buy, they didn't want it to buy so expensive. So they all went to think together to find an advice what to do. They didn't know what to do, so the rabbi sent his helper. He went to the market and asked, How much really are you going to sell the Hadassim for? He came to give them three coins. No. I'll be your translator. Once I was translating rabbis, today I'm translating my kids. What can I do with it? Mikol melamdai iskalti. From all of my teachers I learned, umitalmidai yoter mikulam. But from my students I learned more than all of my rabbis. Yes, Shlomo? So they told him 30. Not moving from that price, he went back to his rabbi. The rabbi, he told his rabbi there is nothing to do. They were waiting until it will be very late. Maybe the non-Jews will regret because no one will buy. But the Jews and the Jews didn't didn't buy, didn't bought. Okay, so then late, very close to the time of the holiday, the rabbi of the Jews came. And he told, everyone laughed at him and they didn't change their opinion. They asked how much it's going to cost, he said 30. He asked how much it's going to cost, they still said 30. So he bought from the biggest merchant what he bought from him. For his sukkah. Only for his sukkah he bought? Yes. Okay. Is this store have a happy ending? Okay. So he bought only for Yowa. Uh, oh wow! We have company. After Shlomo, don't disappear. You made an amazing opening to this story. Yes, Yosef. So the rabbi bought from the big merchant. 
So the rabbi told him, um, I, if you could please take it for me to my house. If you he can please take, he gave him the money and told him, please Ka take it to my house, bring it to my house. Oh, okay. Yes. After, and then he told him, please bring it on top of the sukkah's roof. And then he started flying. And then, and no, then? before he told him to put it in the sukkah, they was walking on the street and then the rabbi said something and he flew with the stuff on the hair on the and the air yes what the non-jew suddenly starts yes. flying in the air because of that spell yes. of and the rabbi the, the rabbi said the word and the, the that that person found himself flying in the air yes and after he saw ducks flying ducks okay and <laughs> goose <laughs> flying a big group of uh, of ducks, geese and he ask them how you are uh, getting it back. how are you landing <laughs> that person that evil person asked the geese how can i land how are you landing so the the he was just flying up and up he was up, just up, rising up, up, up and up until Shlomo no one don't go nothing until he disappeared land. Someone and wants to find the book. something and he fell on the floor. Down. Oh wow, dangerous, and painful. And they changed the price. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and they, they, they reduced the price. They took the price back to be three coins because for a branch. What, oh, wow. Because the king heard the story, then he said that they have to get it for free or in less than three in two. Oh, so from the the next year and on, after the king, the king heard about that story and he said that from now on, you said it only in two, not in three. Well, not well, allow well. even to sell it in three. Oh, and the rabbi became to be the main advisor of the king because of his wisdom that he knew how to uh, fly a kite. <laughs> right? Oh, no. Right, Srulik? No. No, not because of kites? No. No. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Yosef, for completing the mission. Or Avraham for your grace and wisdom. Shlomo Ephraim for being a diamond and a pearl in our house. Israel Nathan, where is Nachman? Nachman is probably keep on learning Gemara. Okay, it's time. And I what? It's time, my friends, to say goodbye. It's time, my friend, to say goodbye. It's time, my friend, to say goodbye. Okay? Goodbye. 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 Hey, guys, we recommend you all to see the, the movie Moana. It's a, an amazing movie. And we think everyone in the world should see that movie. Yes, she is hugging a pig, but it's a friendly pig. And uh, and that's it. It's a very inspiring movie. This movie and Trolls. I think both of those Sing. movies are what? Sing. Nah. Trolls and Moana. Moana. Where is Moana from, Shlomo? Matanui. Matanui. <laughs> See you Hello, soon. Daddy. In the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.